Hi friends, this is Andrew Goodall and welcome to yet another in my series of how I took this photo videos. It's been a while since I last did one of these. I've been doing a lot of traveling this year and if you want to get a taste of what I've been up to, take a look at my Tanzania Great Migration video after you finish watching this one. Now before we start, don't forget to click on the subscribe button so you can keep up to date with all my new videos as they're released. So, that's the advertising done, now onto the video which is all about how I took this photograph of an osprey in flight. I do a bit of this from time to time so I have quite a collection of birds in flight photos. And before I get into the settings, I want to talk about the type of situation I find works best for this sort of photography. First of all, it helps to be working with big birds. You can see here I'm shooting ospreys, eagles and kites. Larger birds tend to follow a more predictable flight pattern, mostly flying in a straight line or circling overhead. This makes them pretty easy to keep lined up in your viewfinder, unlike smaller birds which are more likely to change direction so fast and so often that it's very hard to keep up. Second, notice that in all these photos there's not much going on in the background. The autofocus method I'll be talking about in this video works much better with a plain background rather than, say, in a forest where the camera is likely to focus on everything else but the bird. So this is the photo I'm going to concentrate on for this video. It's not technically my best bird in flight photo, and it certainly isn't my sharpest, but it is one of my favourites. Partly because of the fish, partly because of the intense expression on the bird, but mostly because my chance of pulling this off was about 100 to 1, so I was really quite pleased to get anything at all. Let's start with the camera settings. The thing I need most for a shot like this is a fast shutter speed to try and prevent blurring. For larger birds like this I really need to be shooting at at least a thousandth of a second to try and freeze the action. It was a bit cloudy and the light was a bit low. In order to get my shutter speed up I increased the ISO to 400 and I opened my aperture to f6.3 which is as wide as that lens will go. That gave me a shutter speed of a 1250th of a second, which is fast enough for shots like this. So those are my settings, and any photographer with a bit of experience wouldn't have too much trouble figuring that part out. What I really want to concentrate on now is my method of focus. Here's how I shoot the majority of my photography. Not how I shoot birds in flight, but how I shoot just about everything else. Normally I have my autofocus area mode set to single point and most of the time that single point is in the center of the frame. With the single point I can be very specific about choosing the exact part of the subject I want to focus on. And I have my autofocus mode set to one shot. That's the setting where I can focus once and if I hold my finger on the button the focus will stay locked in place. So for a stationary subject I can focus using the center point and then shift the camera to line up the composition knowing that as long as I keep my finger on the button, the focus won't change. As I said, that's how I take most of my photos, but it's not how I photograph birds in flight. To begin with, the single point area mode just doesn't work. It's almost impossible to keep the focus point where you want it when you're following a moving subject with a handheld camera. And the one shot focus doesn't work either, because even if you can get your subject in focus, it's likely to be out of focus by the time you've pressed the button. So here's what I do for birds in flight. I switch my autofocus mode to continuous. That's the setting where if I focus and keep my finger on the button, the focus will continuously refocus to track the moving subject. Notice here next to continuous, I've put in brackets AI servo. On most brands, continuous autofocus is called AFC for autofocus continuous. But on most Canon cameras, it's called AI servo. So if you have a Canon DSLR and you can't find anything that says AFC, look out for the AI servo in your autofocus mode options. I also change my autofocus area mode to multiple point. That means I don't have to worry about keeping a single point trained on the moving subject. As long as my bird is somewhere in the middle of the frame, the multiple point focus can usually pick it out. Not all cameras give you the option of choosing the number of focus points. On some cameras you can choose between single point, or you can choose multi or automatic focus point selection. Basically it gives you a choice of one point or all the points. But on many cameras you can choose a block of points close to the center of the frame. This is what I prefer to do. It's only a small difference, but it gives me a better chance of ensuring the focus stays on the bird and not on the background. Let's see what this method of focus means in the real world. Remember I've switched to continuous focus to track the moving subject. 
but if I was using the single point focus, the camera would continuously refocus wherever that point is. That means any time the bird changes direction, or if I simply have trouble keeping it centred with a handheld camera, the camera is going to refocus on the background instead of the bird. But by using the multiple points, I have a much better chance of keeping the focus on the bird. As long as the Osprey is somewhere near the middle of the frame, the camera has a much better chance of locking onto it and following it with continuous focus. With my aperture, shutter speed and ISO already set, all I had to do once the focus locked on was press the button. And that's the story of how I took this photo. Now remember earlier I said I had a 1 in 100 chance of getting this right? That's because the Osprey was flying very close to the tops of the trees. Even though I framed it up as best I could, the camera kept on focusing on the trees instead of the bird. When I thought I had the focus locked on, I pressed the button and took six shots in burst mode. Only one of them, the very last one, was in focus. And that's the one you see here. And that brings me to a couple of final points. Your best chance of success for these shots is to set your camera to continuous shooting and take lots of photos. For a challenge like this, even if you do everything right, you're not going to get a great shot every time. Continuous autofocus is better on some cameras than on others, but even with the best camera, you're likely to get more misses than hits. And like anything worth doing, it takes practice to build up your success rate. But hey, if it was easy, why would we bother? I hope you enjoyed the story of how I took this photo. I plan to release more of these videos soon, so once again, don't forget to subscribe before you go. I'm Andrew Goodall from Nature's Image Photography. Thanks for watching.